Are you a fan of the Tor project and want to know how you can contribute to it in your own way? Well, stay tuned because today we are going to learn how to set up your own Tor relay, which will help keep connected users to Tor encrypted. Now, a Tor circuit is made up of three parts. You have the user who connects to a guard. The initial encryption takes place. And then you have a middle relay, which, which adds another layer of encryption. And then you have the exit relay, which is where the user actually connects to its destination website. Now, when a lot of people think Tor, they think of people doing dark, well, dangerous, illegal stuff. And so if you're worried about getting in trouble, it's usually these people at the exit nodes that the government goes after whenever something's illegal done. So most exit nodes are hosted by organizations or universities that have the resources to go into these type of situations. What we're going to be setting up today is called a middle relay because we'll be here in the middle. We're just going to be adding an extra layer of encryption to somebody that's already connected. I will link to torproject.org in my video notes that will tell you the bandwidth considerations you need to keep in mind when it comes to hosting a relay. You'll have to compare these to what you're currently being offered through your ISP before you can decide if you're going to soft host this or if you're going to put this into the cloud. Now their website also has some technical considerations where they suggest certain cloud providers if you're going to do the cloud and certain cloud providers to stay away from. And because of these suggestions that Tor offers, I'm not going to go through the process of how I set my server up. I'm just going to go through the process of setting up the Tor relay on my server because whether you're going to self toast or put it in the cloud and which cloud provider you're going to go with, that's completely up to you. And if you decide that a relay is something that's too risky for you to do, torproject.org also has instructions for setting up bridges, which just does the encryption process between the user connecting to a Tor server. Bridges, the IP address for a bridge is usually concealed to the public, so there's very little risk of any type of legal action coming against you for hosting a bridge. And if you're very limited on bandwidth, there's also what's called a snow, a Tor snowflake that you can set up in a Docker situation, which aids in the encryption process when somebody's on the Tor network. Okay, I have my cloud server up and running, and while I would not say which cloud provider I've gone with, I will say that I am on their lower level tier of what they provide that sometimes you can get for free. And even if you can't get it for free, it, the usual average cost is only about $6 a month. So I'm running a middle guard relay and I'm gonna be using Ubuntu. The very first thing to do is to set up, is to enable automatic software updates and specifically tell it to search for Tor updates. And we're gonna go into the config file for automatic updates and tell it to restart whenever it's needed on its own so that we can set this up and pretty much forget all about this. So first I'm gonna run sudo apt update to get everything caught up in package list. And even though it shows that there's some packages that can be upgraded now, we're going to hold off to do that just yet. So now we're going to install unintended upgrades and app list changes. And you got to do sudo before you do that. So now that it's installed, we need to edit the unintended upgrades config file to look specifically for the Tor repository. And we're going to also add a line to restart whenever it's needed on its own. So we're going to sudo nano this file. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this section right here. And nano makes it really easy. We simply go to the line in question and we hit control K to take out the entire line. And we'll go on down to the bottom. And then once I'm at the bottom, I'm going to hit enter and add some space. And I'm going to add these lines of codes here that will be available for reference in the video notes that are in the video description below. Hit control X and yes to save and enter. And I forgot to add in a line for it to automatically restart on its own. I'm going to put that here. And now I'm going to test the configuration changes by running a dry run first. And you have to be sudo to do this. And no errors means it's successful. So now we need to point toward toward specific package repositories in the system. And first we're going to install app transport HTTPS so that packet managers can use the HTTPS protocol. And now we need to see exactly what operating system version we are using by using this LSB command. And I am running Jammy. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it in my notepad to reference for later. And now I need to create a Tor list underneath my sources list and app. And I have cut and pasted these lines directly from Tor's documentation. And I am going to replace where it says distribution with the specific version of Ubuntu I'm using, which was Jammy. And so yours should look like this, except you may have something different than Jammy here. And we're going to save this. And now we're going to add the GPG key so that we know we can trust the Tor repository. And you have to be root to run this command. And so now I would do an apt update and apt upgrade minus y. And then I personally would restart it after that. When all that comes back up, you can actually install Tor.
And you installed the official Tor version by using this command here, which again will be referenced in the video notes. And with that RAM without error, you can edit the Tor config file, which is usually located under Etsy slash Tor, and it's called TorRC. And as you can see from my screen here, there's lots of configurations you can set, but we're gonna go to the first open space, hit enter a couple of times to create a space. And first we're gonna set up the base configuration. You're gonna give your relay a nickname of some kind. I'm gonna call this Super Relay. And then you need to put in an email. Now this will be a public email, so if you wanna make a specific email to use just for this Tor project, do that and put it here. That's what I did. I'm gonna blur mine out because I don't want y'all sending me an email to it because I'm not checking them on a regular basis. But if if there's ever a problem with your relay and the people at the Tor project need to reach out to you, they're gonna reach out to you using this email right here. The OR port is the standard 443 is what it's gonna be listening on. Now you may wanna change it and you may not. We're gonna leave the same. The zero beside exit relay means that it will never be considered an exit relay. It will instantly. Now an optional section you can add is what I'm gonna use for control and bandwidth on it. Now the service provider provider I'm using has a limit of a terabyte upload speed so I'm going to set a variable called accounting max and I'm going to set it for 800 gigabytes so it's not going to let my server go above 800 gigabytes downloads and you can set a start stop time for this count to take place so in other words how often it resets itself and this cloud service provider bills on a monthly basis so I'm going to set accounting start I'm going to do month spell right month first day and zero zero for midnight. So it will restart on the first every month. And I'm gonna set up some control variables for monitoring purposes. And then we're gonna save all that. Then we're gonna do a, a sudo system CTL enable tour, then restart tour and do the status command and we'll see that it's running. Now we're gonna install a super simple, easy to use app for monitoring tour. Do sudo apt install nyx, yes. And we simply run sudo nyx. And we're instantly presented with a, a terminal where we can see what's going on behind the scenes with our relay. And this one's just came up since we can tell from the uptime. It's been up for about a minute, so there's nothing really there. And we can see the download and upload bandwidth. And we can see the accounting time on here. We've used two megabytes out of 800 gigabytes. And it has exit policy set to reject, so it's going to reject if it ever tries to become an exit. And we can hit the M key, and we're presented with a simple menu on here. I'm going to go to graph and then connections. And as we can see, we got incoming and outcoming connections currently going on. And as you can see from the system log here, it shows that it's looking for the Tor services. And then just hit Control C to get out of that menu, but Tor is still running in the background. And I have a couple other relays that I'm gonna pull up real quick to show you kind of what that menu looks like on them. And so this one's been up for 17 hours and 34 minutes, and it's been tagged by Tor as fast and running and valid already. And it's already used up five gigabytes out of the 800 that I've all allocated for it for the month. And if you're wondering what will happen once you reach that limit you set for download speeds, this is all that happens. Tor will disable it and they won't send active connections to it. And it will sit here showing where it actually stopped at, which for me was 782 gigabytes. And you'll see a current countdown until it restarts again. So some cool things you can do after you get it started up is that you can set it to where it will use IP version six as well as IP version four if you want to. Tor also has a really cool website where you can go and check on the current status of it as well as this really cool read on what the actual life cycle of a relay is. And if you go to this website that will be mentioned in the video notes in the description of this video, for the first zero to three days, for the first three days, your relay is not doing a whole lot. It's basically sitting there waiting for somebody for Tor to go out and test this actual bandwidth speeds. Then once it's tested and verified the speeds for the first eight, eight or so days it's not seeing much traffic to you but seeing a little bit of traffic to you until you basically verify until you actually prove yourself and after about eight days is where you start getting used as a middle relay pretty regularly and if you test yourself if you show yourself to be a very reliable and a very fast server you may eventually become a guard relay but that'd be a couple months along the line of you being up constantly so again there's other ways for you to contribute to the tour project if you want to such as a bridge or a snowflake um i wouldn't suggest having more than one relay or more than one bridge or more than one snowflake on a specific ip address i would suggest spreading them out per ip addresses that way if one gets blocked you still have others going but those are um but as you can see there's several different cool ways and they're interesting projects to set up so i highly suggest that you go to the website in the video description and you check out all these different projects for yourself thank you guys